Hey guys, so Ripper here with a new how-to video for Trailmakers. Today we're going to look at logic, the basics, and in the next video we might go on some more advanced things. First disclaimer, I do not know everything on logic. There are probably people who know a lot more. You might be one of them. If I make any mistakes, please leave those in the comments and we might refresh on this video or make a better video with your comments. If you have any other requests for other videos, please leave those in the comments also. And while you're there, might give this video a like, might subscribe, if you feel like it. Okay, let's go. The logic can be found right here. Right side corner. Click it. We have an AND gate, OR gate, and an XOR gate. We also have some sensors and we'll get to those and the new angle sensor which is in the public uh, beta test so if you want to try this out go to your game uh, go to um, press uh, right click uh, properties beta and then select public 1.1 and you can reinstall your game but okay let's get back to the logic we uh, like i said end gate or gate xor gate Let's start to take a look at the gates mm, uh, on the inside. Configuration. Here we go. Like any engine hinge, you have the option to select an input. Uh, this one and this one. And that will give, of course, the corresponding output, the green output, making a hinge go the green side, a red output to make it go the right side or in a, with the engine, a green forwards, red backwards. Uh, effectively, you can uh, make uh, uh, this into a button by just pressing with no toggle, or you can turn it into a switch by turning on the toggle, which means you have to press to turn it on and press to turn it off again. You can put a delay in, if you specifically if you want uh, something on a toggle or if you want to hold a button longer, you can choose to put a delay in. For instance, if you have something that opens up and then something has to come out, you can time the delays that the uh, hood for first open up, then the uh, weapon or something comes out. And not that they try to go at the same time. So that way you can uh, simply uh, put one thing on nothing and the other one on a one second delay or this is a 0 0.1 I okay that's one thing you can do with it and um, we also have a seconds uh, to stay active after receiving input so when you toggle something or hold the button it will stay on for so long again if you want something to open up for a certain time and then close again while you're holding the button or you want something to move or you want something it can get very uh, complicated very quickly but this will stay on for so long and then it will turn off the next options will time before it resets it's active time this will mean it turn it will turn it off and you can for instance using this make something flicker if you put a light on and connect it to a light and hold the button you can say stay on for 0 0.5 seconds and after 0 0.5 seconds you can reset it and it will go on and on so you will have a flicker every 0 0.5 seconds or 0 0.1 or whatever uh, then we have the output which can um, switch up the uh, output you're giving for forever what reason if you for instance have a um, logic block connected to another logic block and you uh, have multiple outputs uh, like so uh, you want multiple logic blocks and you say okay I want one I'm pressing a toggle here uh, one I have a toggle here which is green and give a green output and I want this one to do um, green but I want the other one to do red in the same time. Well, you just make it a negative output, which changes it to a the green into a 
red output. Like so. This is basically works for any logic block. Uh, the difference in logic blocks is uh, more becomes more clear when you have them connected in certain ways. Then they really become um, you can see what they do. What you also can do is to determine um, the output, not only negative or positive, but also how much you have between zero and one. You have zero, one, zero, two, and just keeps on going until it reaches 1. 1 is essentially 100. And this is 90, 80, 50%, 30, 20, and so on. And a negative, same thing. You can use this, um, it works the best on servos or on engines if you uh, want to um, use not the complete power of an engine. You can lower the output through a logic block and for instance, um, have a different logic block somewhere else, which um, gives a 100% output to the same engine for what for reason. So if you want a low cruise, uh, cruise speed, you can use the one logic block connected to the engine for a 0 0.5 output, so half the output, and you will go half as fast. You want to go fast again, you do a different logic block, you press space on that one. Uh, Something to remember with this is that uh, uh, the output accumulate inside of the thing you have connected. So if you have multiple logics connected to them, uh, which are all, for instance, 0 0.5, they will eventually be a 1 in the end. If you have the outputs on at the same time, it will of course never go higher than 1, so you can put 1 at 1 and the other one at 0 0.5 and it will not become 1.5 no it will just become 1 okay so that's the basics on uh, logic in general now we can uh, look at what each logic does specifically and I built some examples this is for you guys but also for me so let's have a looky loo so we're looking at the end gate the end gates, uh, we can look at the descriptions by the way. Output to output, it doesn't say that to output. Output if all inputs are not zero, so they have to be on. So we have uh, uh, one, two, three switches here. Built from, from end gate, but this could be any logic gate. It doesn't matter, it could be OR, it could be XOR, doesn't matter. And if all inputs are on, this white end gate will send a signal to the mini thruster to fire. So, um, so that means you know everything has to be on for this one to work. And just to show you that I'm not using anything here, this has no input. So uh, let's get in. So, we have um, one, let's turn on, oh, one turned on, nothing happens. Two is turned on, nothing happens. And you can see the green arrows, all two have to be on to be active. And then we press three, and then we have a flame, or frost. So this can uh, be used in different ways. Uh, the inputs do, of course, not have to be logic blocks, they can also be a distance sensor, a speed sensor, and an altitude sensor, and in this case, in the new version of the game, it can be an angle sensor, which we will go deeper in after we had the logic blocks. Okay, so that's the end gate. So for an end gate, again, everything connected to it has to be active or on. Remember this, if you have multiple seats on a vehicle and you have an end gate and it's connected to the end gate, they will, you, uh, you will want all the, all the seats to give the correct input for the end gate to be active. It's something that happened to me in the past. I didn't know why was my end gate not working. It's not working. Why? Oh, wait. 
I have multiple seats, which all give an output. Simply go to your uh, main seat and leave that connected, and then if you have a passenger seat, disconnect it, or use a different way to do it. Okay, the OR gate. The OR gate uh, gives a signal or an output. Output if any input is not zero. So it does not give anything if it doesn't have anything. Logical. But if one or two is on, it will always give an output, and they don't have to be on together. So let's just go into it. So one is on, you get an output. Two is on, you keep an output. One is off. And I think I made a mistake here. Let's see. Yeah, this one is not connected. I just built this for an example. So I probably forgot something. Okay, two is on. An input. So you can, uh, for instance, use this like uh, uh, if you have multiple people controlling one thing, or you want to uh, have multiple pilots in a, in a plane, and they all want to activate the uh, same thing, like a landing gear or something like that. You can do that like this. You can also use uh, the end gate as a hub. Uh, for multiple inputs, like I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, how inputs stack, you can accumulate those in the end gate and get a, a whole input. There are many ways to use logic, it's uh, difficult to explain sometimes. But this is how this works. So the end ga OR gate. One input just has to be active and it will send a signal. No matter how many you connect to it, it will always send a signal. Okay. Now to one of the most useful, at least uh, for me so far, and the XOR gate. Um, how does it work, the XOR gate? Uh, it outputs if only one input is not zero. So this means you can have one output into the XOR gate, any more than that, and it will stop. Now if I, for instance, use something like a speed sound sensor to register movement, and I want a signal to be sent to something to stop that movement, you get one signal, but it's a flickering signal. You know, it's on, off, on, off, off, depending on uh, if your speed goes down and higher again. So uh, for an XOR gate to, to be turned off, I, unless it's a steady signal, I always use two blocks to turn it off. So I'm 100% sure that it's turned off. So how does it work? In this case, we have a distance sensor here as an example. And we have, let's see, get in my seat. We have a, a block on a uh, piston and when the Block activates the sensor, it will turn on the XOR gate. Like so, yeah. I messed up my buttons for a minute. It was space forward and backwards, and I forgot to put it on toggle. Okay. Um, so, now you have an output. Now, for instance, you can give this all output also, for instance, just by saying, and that's a, a neat trick, uh, go to your distance sensor. Say so inverted trigger. This means it will be on as long as it doesn't see anything. It will give an output. Put a distance sensor at 0 0.1 and it will never see anything. 0 0.1 is too short, it cannot see anything. So, now it's permanently on. And I don't know what happened right here. Something went wrong. Oh, I connected it to this one. <laughs> Never mind, but okay, so you can. Um, yeah. So now it's permanently on. So if you want something to work from the start, you want something to be under a certain angle, and I can show an, a short example after this. Uh, now it's always on. Now, for instance, if you use a thruster to stop your movement on a hovercraft from going forward, you know, you have a speed sensor that it's pointing in the direction you want to stop, 
but you want to be able to turn it off. You want to go forwards when it's pushing you backwards or keeping you in place together if you make multiple construction of this in different directions. So now you're pressing forwards and it turns off. Or you can make it so and in that case I would use it as a button and now it's toggled for the example but you can make it a button so when you let go it will turn on and off. But as you can see you get one signal in the start and there are two signals here and one with an option which we don't use. Excuse me. So in this case we can make it a button instead of a switch, just removing the toggle. So press the button, press the button. You can move forwards or you can move left or right, backwards, whenever you whatever settings you give it. So and what can for instance uh, like I said, we're gonna showcase a little bit what you can for instance do with a um permanent on uh, light and where did I leave that car okay here for an example I have this car has this spoiler set on pistons yes now you can set the um, starting position on a piston so when I, I set this one to 0 0.4 that would mean it will go down, but not completely, it will go down uh, about one block and a little bit, just a little bit. And I have a uh, XOR gate with a distance sensor always turned on, through the, through the, uh, through the XOR gate connected to the uh, uh, pistons with a red output, so it will go down farther. But the starting position is 0 0.4. And when I press brakes, when I press brake, it will, oops, there goes an alarm. I will turn it off. There we go. Uh, when I press brake, which is a um, green output, two uh, signals towards the XOR gate, it will release the piston and let it go back to its starting position. So you can get, uh, instead of always having the maximal, maximum height, on a piston set on a piston I'm just telling it as you can see now it's down completely down and I also have put an extra switch on it which is one and as you can see it does not go up fully and that's very difficult normally because you can only set the speed in but as you can see at this moment the spoiler is getting a constant signal of go down stay down and what I do is when I press a button or when I brake, and the brakes only work when I'm driving, when I'm moving forwards uh, until I reach zero and then it turns off. You can see that in my uh, other video on uh, car lights. But when I press backwards, it cancels the output given by the distance sensor. Uh, yeah, the new, uh, this is the new beta test. It's still working out some collision issues but when I break I cancel out the signal so it's not really giving an output it's only cancelling the output and that's what you can use XOR gates for you can also use XOR gates uh, for um, loops for instance uh, I just pressed something wrong here uh, what's an example I have here I was working on a plane and it's going to be difficult to show but uh, this might be a little bit too complicated let's not go there okay um, so that's the XOR gate so more than two outputs or uh, more than one output constantly turns it off so distance sensors well the word already says, says it it's a distance sensor it sees, uh, uh, when it sees something, it sends a signal to do whatever you want. You can use it for a hovercraft. You can use it for a, a collision avo avoidance. You can use it uh, in logic to create a mechanism when you open a door and the, uh, the sensor is triggered. And the next step can be triggered and so on. And like I said before, you can, if 
for some reason the turning oh there's the turning option I wasn't pressing hard enough yeah um, well the settings you can set the distance to uh, up 50 meters which is pretty far uh, I would rather have seen something like 100 meters or more again you can give it a, di a different output scale you can, for instance can say I want I want to trigger at 50 one sensor and have the next one to it which is at a shorter distance and just make the output uh, a little bit higher every time so the first starts off with I don't know two another one starts out with two and the other one also uh, the other one also starts out with two uh, you of course think yeah that's two 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 it's just they're gonna stay two but like I said this is gonna is gonna uh, stack so this is gonna be 0 0.2 0 0.2 it's gonna be 0 0.4 together 0 0.6 and so on so for instance when you're reaching when a hovercraft or a uh, vehicle is coming near the ground closer and closer a little bit of output more output more output the closer you get to to the ground something like that or for instance if you want the car to steer automatically have a few sensors pointing forwards one is going to do it 0.2 from your output the closer you get the harder the output okay uh, the speed sensors well this simply triggers when you reach a certain speed which can be set to this or this I have never I think almost never gone that fast it can be triggered at zero and again you can change the output whatever way you want you could choose to trigger it below or above your setting I for instance used it uh, a lot like this for a hover vehicle if I want something to hover I usually put it on 0 0.2 and trigger below now you might be thinking I will be going up the whole time if I do that but uh, the logic needs some time to react especially if it has to go to multiple blocks so for me usually this this keeps things hovering and keeps them nice and on their place the altitude sensor well same thing not at speed but this triggers at a certain height at one meter above one meter it will trigger or if you want to it will trigger below one meter I use this for instance in hovercrafts which use uh, thrusters and not the hover pads because well I don't use that don't for that and there goes my phone excuse me let me just turn that off very handy no more sound for now okay where were we height sensors um Oh yeah, I use this in hovercrafts, which I make with thrusters, and I use a combination of distance sensors to see the ground, speed sensors with a low output to buffer out movement, and I use the altitude sensor for when I go above water with the, with the hovercraft, because the distance sensor will only see the ground, the floor of the sea, it will not see the water, and the, the altitude sensor will just say, well we're at 1.5 meters, and we're just going to give an output and you can fly on water so that's the altitude sensor can be very useful now what you all been waiting for the angle sensor this is the new uh, sensor uh, in this up in the, in the coming update there is a beta update like I said go to the discord you can always get the info to the uh, trailmakers discord you can always get all the info you can play with people there and you can find me there um, how does this work well you have the blue patch here this ball this arrow will always point upwards no matter how you turn it and it will do that in build mode already so you can do whatever you want to when your vehicle plane boat turns and the arrow the point of the arrow reaches the blue it will turn on or like all the speed sensors you can also say trigger outside now this will mean that it will turn on in all this dark area and not in the blue one so when you put it down 
it is triggered. As you can see, you see the light, yeah, like a like a, a distance sensor, like a uh, speed sensor and, and altitude sensor. Turn on is on. Okay, output same idea again. You can do a lot with it. Give multiple angle sensors and um, uh, you use them to give multiple outputs to uh, eventually give a 0 0.1 or whatever output okay now for a little bit more complicated stuff you can um, choose i wanted to turn uh, let's see you can choose the direction you start without the blue thing of course you can just say i turn the whole thing around that's an option you can also say I want it in a 90 degrees. No, 90. A 90 degrees angle going off apparently in the uh, anti clockwise direction. You can say I want it out at 180, which is uh, pointing straight downwards. Or, um, you know, you can get it the other direction. You can also just do a negative. For the other side, also works. Negative uh, 180 should just point it downwards. So that's the direction that determines where this goes. This determines the width of the activated cell. So if I say 180, uh, 180, you get this. What you, for instance, can do is take two sensors, um, copy, and I, for instance, want these. Uh, I want something to stay straight up, but uh, because this thing doesn't give, uh, it gives only one output, no green or red. You can just say, okay, I want um, 90 degrees in that direction. And I want on this one um, minus in that direction. So as you can see, when it will, <coughs> when things will turn, and we can make a quick example of it. And I didn't prepare for this one, like I did for the other logic blocks. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a quickly built cell. Okay, so now if your vehicle goes left, um, I think I changed. I, I changed some of the settings, of course. So let's, let's see. Trigger outside, turned off. That's good. Now you, for instance, just have uh, the ground is, of course, not perfectly straight here. Maybe if I go here, let's see. Still on a little bit. But if when you turn this way, it will turn on the left side. And you can, for instance, in a plane say, okay, correct that to go back. When it goes right, it goes like that, or right, left, whatever you want to call it. You get the idea. You reach a certain angle. But I already noticed that it's useful, for instance, to say, okay, I don't want it to react every millisecond. Or you want to. A little bit of a um, how do you say that in a controller uh, dead space where it doesn't react so just say I want for instance uh, 10 degrees where nothing happens so now you have a little bit space between the uh, blue square and the arrows so when you're going straight forward it does not react until it does but it's not completely on though and you will notice uh, you'll have to figure it out when you're building a plane it tends to make your plane flip-flop unless it's a very big plane uh, you can also uh, instead of using the control surfaces you can also just say uh, take for instance a helicopter engine and you use that to stabilize your plane or to react 
So let's just say uh, negative output. Did I just, yeah, I just, okay. Negative output, positive output. Set the maximum speed and you can create some kind of, and remove all inputs from this, yeah? so there's nothing here. And now it's like a kind of gyroscope. Of course, it won't. Sp you have to figure it out when you do. But you get these just your plane turns for what's a reason, whatever, and it will try to stop that from doing that. This is of course just a test bench. So, okay, well that's the all of the logic and sensors, which should uh, actually be in a different uh, square, if you ask me. But hey, it's there. Oh. And just as a, a added bonus, there's also dynamite now, which can be triggered, or um, if shot hard enough, it will explode. Uh, if it hits the ground hard enough, it will explode. So that's cool. Well, let's just get a little bit of an example here. Space is already on it, and it will just go boom. And does not blow up. Hmm. Oh wait, there it goes. Yeah, it looked like it wasn't broken, but it destroys the thing it contacts with. And if you shoot it hard enough against something, it will also break. So you can make missiles or whatever you want to, and just blow yourself up. Okay, guys, that was my video on logic. Um, you can do a lot of things with this, but uh, hard, it's hard to explain. But if you guys want to see more, uh, leave your comments in the comments. If you want to see uh, anything else, you have questions about anything else, leave it in the comments. Also, if you find this on Steam, please leave it in the comments. I will get a notification on my phone if you leave it on Steam in the guide. I see it when I go look there and I don't go there too often so if you have any questions leave those in the comments if you like the video please give it a like it really helps subscribe ring that bell so you know when i release something and i don't do that so often so uh, it will be nice if you uh, when uh, the few times i do um and subscribe and uh and i'll see you guys in the next one bye